Good evening, and welcome to uh, yet another uh, rum tasting. As you're probably aware, this is uh, the first of four online tastings that we're doing prior to Christmas. I thought it was a good idea at the time until I realised I had to pre-pour about four and a half thousand miniatures and get somebody to give me a hand to number them up. But anyway, we got there in the end. We've still got a few to bottle, but all the kits are ready to go, as you probably all know. So the first one we're doing is the rum tasting that are tonight. Next one is the Aran whiskey tasting, which we've sold all the kits for. The 150 of them are all gone. Then we have a break for a week. Then we have a gin tasting. A great lineup of gins. And finally, we finish on the 11th with yet again another um, whiskey tasting. So all go, but uh, hopefully it's worth it and hopefully you'll enjoy the tastings and give you something to do on a uh, Friday evening. Um, what we're going to do with this one, slightly different during the break, uh, Andy, who is going to talk about number four and number five, is going to do a little quiz and we'll give you time to do the answers and the prize is six 50 mil uh, samples of rums for you to try and at the end of the night we'll uh, ask Andy to um, pick your name out of a hat if you answer the questions correctly we'll give you allocate your number then we'll ask Andy at the end of the night to pick a number and that person will get uh, samples of um, rums as a little bonus. So that's something extra. So uh, I'm pleased to say that we are going to start off yet again with a local distillery. Young Ray's uh, been very busy, not content with doing uh, two gins. Uh, he's decided to make a rum. And a very distinctive bottle. I haven't got it here, but I'm hopefully Ray will have it. Uh, so uh, with Ray tonight is uh, John. Uh, so if you can uh, pour rum number one. <laughs> I know you've probably all done it already, but into your glass. And we'll bring Ray on board um, to talk about the rum. Good evening, everyone. It's, uh, yeah. it's a pleasure to be here. I've got John, General Manager. He's coming to join. So thank you, Brian. Um, it's great to be here. And we're looking forward to chatting about all things rum. So I'm going to get a vial in there because Brian looks after us too. He made sure that we got some tasty, tasty rums. Some to, rum. And some of <laughs> own rum back. But yes, we, we, we got some things to try. So what we'll do is... Whilst you've got that glass in your hand, it's Friday, it's that Friday feeling, you want to have a drink. So you probably don't want me to airbag for five minutes about the history of the rum yet. I could do that in a minute. So what we'll do is, if we get a nice wee glass and you have a nice wee nose of it. John, what are you thinking as well? There you go, sorry. As if we've only got one glass. But it's fine. Yeah. I, so what we've got is, we've got those beautiful chocolate notes that come off the nose, honey chocolate you get. And people ask us, white rum? What's it all about with you guys? So as Brian mentioned, we've got this really different and interesting bottle. It's half empty for a reason, I have to admit, my, my bad, I like it. Um, it was designed because it's a botanical white rum. So it, it's, it's different in that it uses botanicals that you find in other spirits, you know, like your gin botanicals that we talk about awful lots. We, yeah, we a do lot. a lot. But we used some of our favorites and we wanted to bring those into rum in a slightly different way. So, yes, it's a white rum, but it's a botanical white rum. But anyway, quickly, back to the smells. So we get chocolate, honey. That's something that we, we really like to focus on because there is Peruvian cacao in there. Uh, we use an organic soil association cacao all the way from Peru. And it just brings this lovely little rich note to it. We then have got a little dash of pepper notes on there. And that pepper is very prominent on the palate initially, and then it drops down. And where's that from, John? The Java long pepper. Java long pepper, good yeah, It's Indonesian, yeah. It's Indonesian, yeah. Mm. And then on the palate as well, a little bit of sweetness, natural sweetness, and that comes from Madagascan vanilla. So when people ask us, what's, you know, how do you drink this? 
I have to admit, hand on heart, I wouldn't say it's a sipping rum over ice. It's not, it's not that style of drink in that white rums you can sip over ice. Uh, it is smooth, but I think there's a better pour. And I, myself and John included, we, we really love a rum and coke. It's a classic standard Cuba Libre. So what we've got here is a little dash of ice. We've got, of course, rum. We're, we're being cheeky here because we, we're adding it in. I mean, the Cuba Libre is one of those drinks that is easy. It's technically a cocktail, but to be honest, it's quite straightforward. And a little lime, sorry, John. Got a little bit of lime and then just Coke. So this rum, we have to admit, this is where it goes into its forte, is when you have a rum and Coke. When it's with that Coke, in Coca-Cola, as caramel notes naturally, that's part of the flavor profile of Coke. So when it works with the rum, it brings out that lovely sweetness and you get this really smooth, easy drinking rum and Coke. And that's what we wanted to achieve, is a rum that you mix with and a rum that you can drink just chilling at home, Friday night, fancy, not a robust gin tonic, little plug there for Oro, we always, <laughs> always have to. Uh, but otherwise, it's just that little smooth note you get from the rum, it's a bit sweeter naturally, which is why rum drinkers, John and I, rum drinkers as well as, as gin, they are a different palate side to, to gin, very much so. So there's our kugelila, John, chin chin. Drink, oh, you've, got, you've got your rum coke, there we go. <laughs> so that's, ah, we have a question. Why 39% ABV? Uh, thank you, Karen, thank you, uh, thank you, Brian. It's, there's a reason behind it. We, we actually tested flavor profile um, legally speaking, rum has to be over 37.5% ABV. What we did was we flavor profiled, blind tasted it from 37.5% right up the spectrum to 44%, 45%. And we just, after much testing and the sort of heats where you had two versus one and then two placebo blinds and so on, we got to a point where this was a clear, clear winner at 39%. And the reason why we liked it at that strength was because the chocolate note was was there very much on the front of the nose and on the palate. However, it didn't have the bitterness, well, bitterness, the, the sort of acidic, heavy notes from alcohol yeah. you normally find when you can get. It's not as, as punchy and nippy as it can be at higher ABV, but the flavour does come through with nice ah, ah. chocolatey honey. Yes, yeah. Uh, oh, Gary. So never thought I'd enjoy this white rum. Fantastic. That's good to hear. Oh, lovely to hear that you enjoyed it. Neat. Um, why an interesting bottle? Well, at Oro, we like geometry, and we like, we, we sound sad saying that. We like geometry. I like geometry, but what we liked with the Oro bottle that we had from gin is that it's perfectly square to perfectly round, but we wanted to keep that interesting angles and interesting ways that when light hits the bottle, you get these really interesting effects. So you can see here, we've actually got just a, a little LED somewhere behind us, and you can see that it's actually catching really nicely off all the faces. So what we liked about this one is it's, it really stands up, it's tall, it's striking. It stands up in a back bar, but it's also very fine. So we wanted it to be that it's a Scottish vapor infused white rum, one of the few in the world, if not only ones that we know of. No, no, no. There, there are potentially others, but we're, we're working on finding them because we want to make friends. And the reasoning, again, is it just, it's very clear to the eye. It catches the eye when you scan a bar. So that was why the bottle was, was a much needed change for us. We, we wanted to keep the Oro brand style, but have a bottle that was a little bit more eye-catching because the, the gin one is a bit more timeless classic is how we like to phrase it. Bundaberg ginger. Oh, that is a, that's one of John's favorite pours, yeah. Bundaberg ginger. Um, you know, rum and ginger is, is a beautiful drink at any time of the year. Whenever you feel like it, just well, rum and ginger. More so just now about how cold and nippy it gets. It's aye, like, aye, aye, aye. <laughs> nice and warm. Mm. So what John's going to do now, actually, just as a nice little um, interest point, you're going to make a classic mojito. Yeah, which... a, a, a quick one, which not as easy to do this or this time of year, but I think the supermarkets do have mint. But... Yeah, you, you can go in the in the herbs and and, and uh, fresh aisles, and in there they've got packets of, of mint all year round now. So it, it should be straightforward. straightforward. Uh, so it's taking a glass, and in there it's a teaspoon of brown sugar. No, brown sugar gives a bit more like caramel note coming in um, and dipping in a sweetness. I'm um, going to pop in one shot, so 25ml of lime juice. You can use fresh lime 
Uh, um, you can put lines in there, can't you? Lines in muddle. there, because we're going to muddle it. Right. And then it's that fresh mint that we've got. Nice little handful. So just get a handful, tear it as you put it in, and it helps get all the oils come out. All right. Now, if you've got a muddler at home, great. A spoon, or a mixing spoon, stirring spoon. Rolling pins. Rolling pins. They're good. The lots. Just sort of go get in there and work it. So you hear the sugar grinding way. I'll try not to break the table or the glass. Uh, and you want to break up the mints, get some of the sugar down, uh, dissolving in the line. See, the reason why we're, we're showing a cocktail quite quickly with, with the rum is because that's really what this white rum's about. It's about mixing and enjoying. It is a different medium to carry different flavors and flavor profiles. That's what we love to do. We love to accentuate more, say, the, you know, the, the chocolate notes or then bring out the orange. So interestingly, in, in Oro, there's Oro rum. There's also um, orange from Murcia in Spain, and it's got that real bright, bright freshness to it. And we've, we've found that with the woody Coke particularly, uh, which is a signature mixer from Coca-Cola, it works really, really well, uh, bringing up a little dash of that orange, especially if you garnish with orange. Yeah, let me just sorry put in some crushed ice. You don't have it all. Right. Yeah, it does work because citrus does bring through lovely <coughs> the orange. And then, of course, we have the rum. So we're going to pour the rum through the ice. On the top. And we're just going to lift up from it. There we are. On there. There we go. There we go. And I then I'm holding a chalice. So. <laughs> classically, you would top with soda. Yep. Perhaps we have. This very interesting. We've got Le Jolie, which is a really interesting sparkling it's Mexican lime mint water. As you I have no idea where it came from, but it does bring up a really interesting fun note. Uh, it makes it like a spritz, so a spritz on the eater. And then finally, it's a quick little stir just to get right. a nice mix. And then, and then cheers. You've got a classic, simple, easy to make mojito. And the good thing about mojitos, they do carry flavors. So you can do citrus, you can do mango mojitos, you can do strawberry mojitos, yeah. whatever you fancy. So cheers everybody on that one. That's a that's a quick one. And just while I try this, John, explain why it's vapor infused. Um, so the vapor infusion, um, as we have the gins, we've worked a lot of botanicals, um, and we macerate. We don't actually have any vapor infusion in our gin, and we've always sort of wanted to play with the vapor uh, infusion basket we have. Yeah, uh, it brings a little bit lighter notes coming through instead of some of the heavier, earthier notes you get some from some botanicals. Um, so it's more. To keep the rum light and not as sort of overpowering and um, get some nice spice notes, a little bit of um, chocolate coming through. Uh, so we said to use the vapor infusion just for the, yeah. the cleanness. Exactly that. Um, so it, flavors. it passes through the still a, a slightly different way to the gin in that it goes through the rectifying columns, which strip out heavy oils. And then it passes through that basket, as John said, of a vapor infusion basket. So basically, you can end up with a spirit that's coming off the still at 85 plus percent ABV. So it's very high ABV, but then you, when you bring it back down, all those lovely flavors sit in. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to go over because we could talk about rum for hours, but I think it's just good timing. Here he is. No, that's uh, very interesting. Um, I am drinking my um, rums neat tonight. Um, Want to do mixers, but I did. Uh, funny enough, Kath Mabbit had said, um, I think John had mentioned uh, ginger beer. Um, yeah. Last rum tasting, a lot of the rums people were suggesting the yeah, yeah. Pour, ginger beer. So, we do have that in stock, it's really good. Uh, so, it's uh, £1.35 a bottle. Um, so Goes along if you want to try. Ginger beer with any rum that you buy when you come in to collect your rum. Um, we have the Bundaberg ginger beer available. There you go. There you go. Well, that was uh, very interesting, Brian John. Thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure. We, we maybe forgot to mention one thing that's been lying there waiting to be. Uh, 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 rum. I knew, to the, end. The, the, the beautiful cask rum is it's absolutely on point at the moment I'm really really pleased and I, i've been talking to brian uh, for everyone watching i've been talking with brian about this for a while now because it's a really important point you want to make it just right on flavor not very too far and not very too shy and you can't you can't rush it but you want to make sure it's the best it can be and i have to admit it's really starting to taste beautifully right now and keep watch this space there's going to be some exciting developments coming very very soon from us with, with that cask rum and with our second sort of single cask one which is our first ever cask we put down in, in 18 so that that's coming very very soon keep keep watching and we'll keep talking to you brian about that one as well 
That's fine. Okay. Well, thanks very much, boys. Enjoy the rest of the evening. You can uh, relax, kick off your slip off, get the plane time. Run time. Bye bye. 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 I think Ray's on this program just as much as I am, actually. But it's good to have somebody uh, local who's diversifying. And um, I hope you guys will support your local um, distilleries, your local businesses. So that's rum number one out of the way, bang on time, quarter to eight. And hopefully David will be on board next, if all goes to plan. Hopefully. Is that any better than last time? Uh, your picture's a bit distorted, but I think you're, I think you're yeah, it's, it's fine. And yeah. Um, yeah. I think you're, the speech is okay. Yep, perfect. I'm right next to the router, so I can't, I can't, I can't do any better. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's absolutely fine. So, um, uh, are we agreed on what <laughs> what we're going to be tasting tonight after that little uh, mix-up earlier on? No, that was fine. I just wanted to clarify. So we've got um, Kapali cacao rum. So there are going to be two cacao rum, two cacao rums in a row, and um, hopefully there's going to be a good amount of variation compared from one compared to two. So. Okay, well, what, what I'll do then, I'll just leave the screen, David, and let you take the screen just now. Now I can jump on. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Well, thanks very much for that, guys. Um, that was great to start with a really nice, light, fresh, different style of rum. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, so, as I say, we're going to follow on with another cacao rum, Kapali cacao rum, um, which is a really kind of new five-year-old distillery from southern Belize. So not one of the kind of... Uh, the major powerhouses of the rum industry. Uh, Kapali is one of the, the newer arms to the Kapal Tree distillery group. So Kapal Tree is a 20-year-old kind of agriculture, agri-tourism business in the, in the southern part of Belize. And um, the idea is to create a kind of agricultural, sustainable um, tourism industry. And that was going for about 15 years alongside um, Kapal Tree Farms. Um, they were growing coffee, they were growing uh, cacao, and they were growing sugarcane. So the idea behind Kapal Tree Distilleries was to create a sustainable distillery, employed lots and lots of local people, um, kind of worked within a closed loop system, and utilize the ingredients from Kapal Tree Farm. So probably I'm assuming what the main difference is between one and two is apart from there's no pepper orange or anything like that what we have here is we have a sugarcane juice rum so agricultural style uh, I wouldn't call it agricultural not from any of the French speaking areas of uh, the Caribbean or Central uh, America uh, Belize being an old uh, British colony and this is from the rainforested uh, area in southern Belize uh, a kind of special protected 22,000 acre area rainforest. Um, so, sorry, <laughs> losing a little bit. Um, so what the guys are trying to do was that they were trying to utilize what they had. So they had some sugarcane, uh, heirloom sugarcane varieties that they were growing sustainably. Um, very chocolatey. Um, <laughs> Uh, so what they're trying to do is create a sugarcane um, rum. So this is made from fresh, fresh pressed sugarcane juice rather than from molasses or any other byproducts. Uh, it goes through a long fermentation. And while the fermentation is going on, it have all the waste products. So when we're milling it, we have the kind of leftover fibers. They'll go back into the fields to help um, fertilize the next crop for the next year's um, distillation run. Um, and then once we're done with fermentation, and um, we'll go into distillation. Any waste process, any any waste materials all go back to the farm. Any CO2 that comes off is recaptured and then absorbed by uh, the sugar cane in the fields for next year's uh, distillation. Um, so I'll kind of go into chatting a little bit about it. So that was, um, that's the kind of rough, I'll not go into too much detail, I think people will get a bit more detail later on. Um, but essentially what we have here is we have a 25% column still and 75% pot still blended rum. Okay, that's then macerated in uh, steel tanks for six months, just to kind of let it chill out a bit. And then what we'd go through then is we go through a, a another six months resting with uh, cacao nibs. Cacao nibs grown sustainably on Kapal Tree Farm. 
So what you're getting is a really kind of intense, really thick body, really re uh, coming from the pot still component, uh, but slightly lighter than some agricultural style rums you'll try, uh, mainly because we've got a little bit of column still distillation going on in there, 72 plate column still distillation. Um, and then the long maceration brings in from cacao nibs. When you try raw cacao nibs, it's never just talking about chocolate. And um, when you talk about really good chocolate or really good coffee, you tend to be talking about things like berry notes. And when you're gonna get your nose and your aroma, I've noticed a few people comment already, really, really chocolatey, but there's back notes of coffee. There's lots of kind of dark berries going on in there. A little bit astringent in quite a pleasant way. And yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. So, Kapali, as I say, oh, lovely. This has actually just come out this year. Uh, there's only been a run of 2,000 bottles in the initial um, initial run. That's kind of limited by the amount of sugar cane, the amount of cacao available um, for the distillery. Um, yeah, that's a Kapali cacao. Um, very, very versatile. Um, so it's lovely, lovely to sip me, but I hope you'll all agree. Really chocolatey, really smooth, lots going on. But if you stick that in an espresso martini, you've got all the notes that you kind of want there. And uh, your chocolate, your kind of coffee beans, that kind of thing. It's brilliant, and despite the light colour, fantastic in an old-fashioned, um, in a Manhattan-style drink. Or as the guy said before, because you've already got those lovely cacao notes and the caramel that you get from Coke, fantastic Cuba Libre-style drink. And... Absolutely, absolutely great with uh, ginger beer as well. What you've got there is because it's so intense and so full body, it'll stand up to anything you put it with. So if you stick it in a Negroni, it will stand, stand up to Campari and Sweet Fruit. If you stick it with Coke, it won't be drowned by Coke. You also very much taste that you're trying a, a really good agriculture style rum. They, they also make, um, there's a couple of other styles of rum, David, that they make as well, isn't there? Absolutely. So the... Um, this is actually based on the original, so Kapali white rum. This that one's actually bottled forty-two percent. What we found is the cacao brings a bit of bitterness that's slightly better at a lower ABV. So this one's bottled at forty percent. We have a white rum that um, again twenty-five percent column still, seventy-five percent pot still. Arrested for six months in uh, stainless steel vats and then bottled. Absolutely beautiful, lovely medakery, really fresh, really clean, really grassy. Um, and then we also have a barrel rested version that uh, we released last year and um, released every year. And um, that one's uh, rested for two years in um, an ex bourbon barrels, uh, so specifically from Jack Daniels at the moment. Um, and those ones are actually 100% cocktail. So what you get from the um, the barrel rested version is a lot more body, even more than this, which is creamy anyway. Um, quite a light cask interaction you get a little bit of vanilla coming into it as well but that's bottled at 44 percent and it's just lovely for what he lovely for sipping me or again because it is so versatile and um, so gary's asking taste distinguished would you ever mix this with anything cold lemonade yeah absolutely never feel as I was saying, never feel kind of worried about mixing it with something. And um, Coke will be fantastic because you've already got the kind of caramel notes. It's just going to lengthen those out. You've got a little bit of berries at the back note. As we mentioned before, Bundaberg ginger beer, if that spice is just going to work brilliantly with all that chocolatey notes and the full body nature of the rum. Um, or as I say, simple, sim simple cocktails are really good as well. Things like old fashioned, so some sugar and bitters, fantastic. And um, some bitters and sweet vermouth in a Manhattan style drink is brilliant as well. And it's lovely in a grown with some campari and sweet vermouth. And if anything you think that would work with chocolate notes works really well. Mm. It, it certainly does. I mean, because I'm drinking it neat, no ice or anything, there is that aftertaste of chocolate on the palate. That mm -hmm. is, mm. I tend, I, I tend to find it's a lot more pronounced on the nose. You get a lot, a massive waft of really, really dark, intense, rich chocolate. But it's a lot more integrated on the palate. And I think when you try it, you get a lovely burst of these kind of grassy, fresh notes, really creamy, which obviously helps to kind of um, bring forth the idea of chocolate, in your, chocolate or cacao in your mind. Um, and then there's a nice little touch of astringency just to stop it from being too sweet and a little bit of berries but there's no it's a lot it's a lot softer than i would say from a lot of kind of um sugarcane rums just simply because we've got that column still element that tends to kind of balance everything out quite nicely but yeah i'm quite i'm quite happy to end that there 
if everyone's got any questions. I think I'm about on time. Yeah, two minutes. Um, well, unfortunately, your colleague Stephen. No, he said oh, he's ready. oh, he's ready. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's him. Oh, that's Stephen back for the pub. That's okay. <laughs> Couldn't have said that. Hope you had a substantial meal when you were having your alcohol, Stephen. So. Cheers. Thank you very much for that. And maybe, um, maybe Dick's rum tasting, we can try one of the other um, rums that you were talking about as well. Absolutely. Love to. Love to come back. With, with the likes of that, you won't get it in major supermarkets and things because there's just not enough production. No, no. Uh, there will be a limited run every year when the cacao harvest happens, when the uh, sugar cane happens. Um, this yeah. is the first run, 2,000 bottles. As I say, it's a very unique little product. We just brought it to market. Um, so you will never see this in any supermarket. It's only going to go to independent retailers. And I think, you, I think you're think you potentially the first person in Scotland to have it as well. So if you like it, get it. <laughs> there you go. Another string to my bow. <laughs> That's two strings I've got now. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for your time, David. Hope you can stay on and enjoy the rest of the rum. Thanks, Keep it Got them all lined up. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Cheers, young man. So, well, that was quite interesting, uh, having two white rums uh, side by side. So uh, with a bit of luck, Stephen will be jumping on board. Yep. Or maybe not. No, 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 he's here. Technology is a great thing when it works. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, for longer than normal there, Stephen. Oof. Technology is great. <laughs> oh, I know what, when it yeah. works. Well, at least we got David's working. That was one thing. But uh, both the rooms so far have been fantastic. So really enjoyed that. Thanks for sending that kit out, Brian. It was very yeah, good. No, I think it's quite quite important that uh, or quite good that you can actually join in as well as yeah, work it. Once mm -hmm. you've done your own slot, you can sit back, as I said to Ray, to kick off your slippers and enjoy the rest of the evening and um, see what other people are doing as well. It's almost like having a night out. It's great. Uh, well, <laughs> right, um, I'll, I'll just leave you to uh, talk about your rums for a few minutes. So I'll get off the screen, let you have the stage. And uh, again, 10, 15 minutes to talk about the product. And also, I, I think we both know that there's other... Uh, cargo spice. Yeah. You mention it, but I did strategically stick it in the background there. So. <laughs> can you really see it? But by all means, once you've talked about this one, you can bring it onto the stage as well and give right. it a, a bit of advertisement. We haven't got them in yet, but we will right. get them in the next. Good man, thanks for that, Brian. Leave it to it then, Stephen. Thanks, Brian. Cheers. Hi right, guys, my name's Stephen. I'm from Indie Brands, and I'm here to talk to you today about cargo cult rum. So we've had two white rums so far, and this one here is actually a spice drum. So something a little bit different. So this is a cargo cult spice drum. It was created by a nice chap called Johnny, who's based in, we in uh, New South Wales, Sydney. And we've got a really, really big spice drum market in, the, in Scotland, particularly in the west of Scotland. People have got a little bit of a sweeter tooth. So they do, we do really well with spice drum here, but it's been grown in Australia for a long time as well. But Johnny, who created the brand, he noticed that people were, there was a lot of new spice drums coming out, but they were all very, very sweet. And people were mixing them with ginger beer, Coca-Cola, stuff which was also really sweet. So you were having this kind of sweet on sweet. And he thought, well, what I want to do is I want to create a brand which could be which could be mixed and it won't end up being overly sweet. So he created Cargo Cult to be a spice drum which, which was specifically no, no sugar added. So... The brand he built, his dad was in the army, so that's how he came up with the name Cargo Cult. Basically, I don't know if you can see it there, but this is a little, the little branding that we've got. And it was based on, uh, during the Second World War, once, uh, once the soldiers made it to the South Pacific, they were making it onto the islands, and they were taking with them their aid and their other cargo as they had it. So they were taking loads of things, which was like, you know, cigarettes, chewing gum, Coca-Cola was actually one of them as well. And they were leaving these on the island and the islanders thought that they were actually being sent from, from heaven. So that's how they came up with the brand Cargo Cult. So if you want to just pour yourself vat number three there. There we 
here. So, pour yourself a little bit. Ooh. So on the nose, again, there's no sugar added to this. So with a lot of spice rums, you'll find that they're particularly sweet. Whereas this one, if you try it, it's actually got a real drying feeling to it. So you taste it and you can get that really right, right there at the back of the throat. So the spices are clove, cardamom, cinnamon, ginger, and vanilla. And you're getting so much natural sweetness from that vanilla. Lots of really nice spicy flavors from the cardamom. And you don't, you don't need any sugar added to that but it also mixes really, really well too. So, if anyone's getting, getting questions, feel free to fire it on. And I'm gonna just make a little mix drink here with it too, because that's the whole point. So you've got, I know whoever's at home is probably not gonna be mixing, but for the sake of argument, I'm gonna use 25 mils. There we go. I know you guys won't have this, but I've got my nice little branded cup here. To use that. You want some ice as well. A couple of squeezes of fresh lime. Now this was made specifically to be mixed with ginger beer, but it actually goes really, really well with fresh pressed apple juice. So I brought this and there's Andy asking there. Again, rum and ginger always works really, really well, but I just think pressed apple juice. If you can buy it from the supermarket, it means that you don't have to blend up the apple at all. There we go. So we've got that there, and that's your cargo. That's fantastic. So I've got you there as well. I'll show you the Cargo called banana. Now, I won't go on about this one too much because I know we've got a banana rum coming up at the end. But this is exactly the same, but it's blended with some uh, really ripe Queensland bananas. And I'm sure we can possibly look at getting this one on for the next one. Yeah. And that's pretty much cargo cup. Yes. Um, yes um, noticed that you had got the banana. Can't yeah, I we won't talk. I wouldn't talk too much about it because I know you've got you've got one coming up at the end there. And I'm not um, really this was, uh, as you would imagine, organised a couple of months in advance to make yeah, sure yeah. That, um, what we were doing. Um, so that's why we've got one uh, the the Lang's banana rum. Mm -hmm. at the end. I'm not. I'm looking to trying it. I've never had it before, but I remember you saying that it was uh, it was really big years ago. You could get it in and I've yes, noticed yeah. And, uh, and uh, funny enough, uh, about 20, well, more than 20 years ago, it was quite popular in this area. We were wholesalers. Oh, really? Uh, one of the major customers of us um, was a pub in the place called the uh, Draqueer Arms. Oh, yeah? Cases of 12, and they would buy a case of 12. Mm -hmm. And we were reg regular uh, drinkers of the Lang's Banana Rum. Uh, and we now own that pub. Oh, really? <laughs> My brother-in-law, Ian, runs the pub. And everybody in the pub can remember Lang's Banana Rum. But it was a generation before us who were drinking the Lang's Banana Rum, probably two generations before you, to be honest, right. but a generation before me. Um, so everybody remembers the Lang's Banana Rum. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it was quite exciting when we were telling everybody that the Lang's Banana Rum was coming back out. So, mm -hmm. Brilliant. Uh, uh, that's why we're doing the, the, the Lang's Banana Rum at the end. But mm. I think, I'm sure, we will do if it's okay with yourselves. Absolutely. Uh, help, uh, as, a, as a comparison. Yeah. And we do a, a promotion with um, the Cargo Cult and maybe try and get these tin cups in. Yeah, because I can get you some of these down there. And then anyone who anyone who buys a bottle of it on your, your offer, they can, they can come and collect it afterwards as well. Yeah, yes. I'll have, a word, I'll have a word with Grant about that. <laughs> yeah, we can definitely get them sent down. But anyone, I'm hoping that we could have maybe, a lot of people, particularly people who are kind of young rum purists, don't really tend to go for spice drum because they yeah. kind of associate it with being really, really sweet. So, and Andy's there. It's, yeah, it is suitable for diabetics, yeah. Yeah, well, that's good. 
No, it's totally different. I have to say, it's a. This is the first time I've tried it. Yeah. Do you get really dry tape on the palate? Yes, exactly right. It was quite a, uh, an interesting comparison to other spice rum. Yeah, and like I said, anyone who <laughs> anyone who just likes a nice kind of rum and ginger works really well too. Uh, um, well, if it, Victoria, if I knew that, that this was going to turn into a cocktail night, <laughs> we probably would have had or suggested that you have certain drinks and mixers available. Well, so the next time, next time we do a rum tasting, I'll find out from the guys um, what surprises they're going to give to uh, to, to make. Uh, and we'll maybe put a note on your tasting sheet what to have uh, ha as a standby. And maybe mm -hmm. you guys can get involved with the guest speakers and um, make your own cocktails as well and have as well as having eight rums you can have eight cocktails i was going to do a daiquiri with that as well but i decided you know what that could end, that could definitely end the chaos and especially because I've, I've been been worried about getting interrupted by a dog this whole time too so <laughs> <laughs> uh, right okay well thanks very much um well, you guys Hopefully, um, we'll see you in a couple of months' time when we do our next um, rum tasting. Don't know when that's going to be. We're not going to do any, folks, we're not going to do any tastings in January. Um, we're, Karen and I are going to put our feet up for two or three weeks to catch our breath after the festive period, and then we'll kick off again um, in February sometime and space all the tastings out. So, uh, hopefully... In February, March, Stephen, for the next well, rum tasting. You'd usually be doing your festival roundabout now as well, Brian. I'm going to miss it this year. Well, this is why we're this is why we're trying to cram in four tastings in five weeks. Mm -hmm. the, the, yeah. the, it would have been the end of November, so we're trying to keep everybody happy um, by doing it. It's caused us a lot of work, but it's going to make a lot of people happy that they can sit for four Friday nights um, and enjoy that instead of cramming it into a four and a half hour. Mm -hmm. yeah. 840 people and um, now they've got the space and the time just to enjoy okay it's only eight drinks but multiply that by four and you've got 32 obviously yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so thanks very much for your time Stephen. Okay. I hope you thanks <laughs> Cheers. well that was very interesting certainly a surprise to me <clears throat> i do have a sweet tooth as i'm sure you're all aware but that was that's got a really nice and um, dry finish to it. In case you're wondering, don't panic. I'm not having full measures of the rum. Now that's that's still what's left out the bottle, so I'm only having half of them. Uh, so number four coming up is the uh, spice height spice hunter with Andy. So if Andy, if you'd like to jump on board, good evening again. Hello. I'm back. I do apologise. I do have a tiny, tiny little person who won't go to sleep. I have a small assistant. So I'm just going to feed her melty puffs to keep her quiet because my wife's also doing an event tonight. <laughs> so yeah, no, thanks for having me. And uh, I, have to, I have to be honest and admit, this is the first time I've done one of these things. So uh, hopefully, hopefully I'll be allowed back. <laughs> And you've got a young assistant to give you a hand. I've got a young assistant. Ah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, hi. hi I'm, I'm all, all good to go. I'm looking forward to this. Sorry, if I, if I have to turn suddenly, it's to provide the, the tiny child with another small melty puff treat. But I know. Uh, Thanks for having me along today. Uh, so I'm actually going to be here to talk about two different rums. Um, one will be a spice rum, and then after the break, we'll be talking about one of my other rums. But I actually work for Berry Brothers and Rudd, uh, and I thought I would explain a little bit about that because it kind of gives a little bit of a background to what we're doing with the rums. Yeah. So Berry Brothers and Rudd, we're one of the oldest wine and spirit merchants in the world. We've been on the go since 1698. And what we've actually done with both the rums that I'm going to be talking about <laughs> tonight is uh, we actually teamed up with Medina Historic uh, across Mauritius. So as well as it being different rums, um, we're taking away 
out of from what we would normally have, which would be the Caribbean. So I'll run all the way across to Mauritius. So I will probably talk too fast and run through it. So feel free to fire lots of questions at the end if there's any sound missed. So what we're going to do, I'm going to talk about the bottle, first of all. Uh, and then talk about things after we've had a little bit of taste. Because if I say anything, taste, flavour, anything like that beforehand, it's all that's going to be into your head. So what we have here, this is Spice Hunter. This is relatively new to the market. Uh, we launched that, would have been about a year, year and a half ago. Uh, we actually tested it out in Glasgow. Uh, so uh, another company, another, which I won't name names, they were allowed to sell a couple of different versions of it uh, to see if we could get everything completely correct with the flavour profile first of all because if you're going to test the spice rum you have to test it in Scotland we, we do have that flavour profile there so um, about the bottle I don't know if you'll be able to actually see here there's a little man in a boat here and it's the story of this gentleman called Pierre Poivre now if you can translate that from French into English I thought it was a bit of a marketing nonsensical guff, to be perfectly honest. So it translates as Peter Pepper. But Pierre Poivre was actually a real live gentleman. He's a French botanist and he was renowned for chasing down different spices from around the world. Uh, and if you look even closer on the bottle, you see he's only rowing with one oar because he lost an arm to a cannonball. But I think if there's enough rum in your system, you're not going to notice. So let's have a little nose and a little taste. I've uh, pre-prepared some, kept well away from the tiny chap. So this is bottle number four of your sample pack. So have a little nose and have a little think about things because I think it's an incredibly strong aroma that comes through there. And I get lots of different things coming from lots of different people when I've done these tastings, when I've done trade trainings and so on. This is all. This is almost moving into that BBC World Reporter guy when his child comes along into the room. <laughs> You're okay, Lola. Uh, yeah, cloves exactly, Karen. So cloves, ginger, uh, a little bit of cinnamon, uh, nutmeg. All of these things. Just uh, to me, it's like Christmas. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm quite happy talking about other people's brands, and I probably shouldn't because I look after Berry Brothers. But it reminds me of doing bits and pieces when I was doing stuff with Dark Matter back when I was actually worked for a living as a bartender. But it's Christmas. It's just light and fresh. So have a little sip. Have a little taste. And again, it just carries on with that ginger. You've got a little bit of heat there. You've got a little bit of chilli. There was a little bit of cardamom, but at the same time, it's, yes, it's all this menagerie of different flavours and tastes, but it's not too muddled. I think what Doug McIver, our master distiller at Berries, and Jean-Francois Koenig have done is they've managed to piece this together very, very well. And it's instead of a, a big burning heat, it's just incredibly warm and and it just it, it lingers, it carries on for a long, long time. So I think what we've got here is something that I think is quite unique within the spice rum world. And that's not to, to, to denigrate any other spice rum brand. It's unusually for a spice rum, it's a spice rum that I think you can actually sip on its own. Um, yes, I'm drinking it just as is. No ice, no mixer, nothing. But what I will quite often do with it is to uh, just over ice, a little wedge of orange, a little orange peel, a little twist. And it just softens a couple of the slightly harsher elements, should we say, if you find them harsher. But it just elongates it ever so slightly. Um, what we've got here as well that's a little bit different and a little bit more unique when it comes to the, the world of spice rum. Uh, I mean, we have another spice rum in our portfolio as well, which is slowly disappearing. It's uh, Pink Pigeon. It's not overly yeah. sweet. <laughs> exactly. Lola, thank you. It's not overly sweet. It's not heavily laden with sugar. It's not heavily laden with vanilla. It's trying to forge a different path. And I think that's something that's, that's, that's required. 
I mean, having a, a spice rum that is sweet, having one that is vanilla, having one that is cinnamon, that's great because everyone's going to drink entirely different things. But we wanted to choose something which was a little bit different. So we have minimal added sugar. Uh, and usually it's, it's, it's actually aged. Uh, it's aged for about two and a half years. I um, and yeah, it's just something very interesting, I think. Um, I've probably run far too fast. So does anybody have any questions? As I'm being distracted by the child, I do apologize. I'll just drink more rum. I might feed her some rum and try and get her to sleep. The sea men can't multitask. I'm sorry? The sea men can't multitask. <laughs> I'm, try I'm learning. I'm learning before my wife kills me. <laughs> yes, well, this bottle of Bundaberg rum has been the yep. So I've actually opened it. Okay. Added How are you finding it with the ginger beer? Having it with the ginger beer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, it's just opened it up. It's really, really good. When I, I mean, it is, and with with the ginger, you're finding it's gonna it's gonna elongate and accentuate all the different spices that are there. Yeah. Um, generally, have it. I will always say have it with coke, and I'll say that about any rum, whether it is a bottle off your local supermarket or some high end. Any rum, any rum's gonna go with coke. Uh, but this with Coke, I had it, had it described to me once as Spice Hunter and Coke tastes like Daddy's Cola. Yeah? It's, 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 it's like a grown-up cola. The best way of describing it, and to me my brand, which isn't mine, is it, it reminds me of Fentiman's Curiosity Cola. So you think about that old-school Coca-Cola, that old-school cola recipe where you've got so much going on rather than just fizz and sugar. That's that's what comes across into it. Um, it's it is a mix. It's the thirteen different spices in it, um, which you're gonna have to forgive me. I always have to check my note because I can never remember that many things. So yeah, so the chili, the cinnamon, the ginger, the nutmeg, the cardamom, clove, cubed berries, uh, caraway seed, black pepper, allspice, vanilla. Uh, pimento and then something called a lemon and a, a lemon is something that's not that widely known or used um, it's actually a small nut from a tree in the Philippines uh, which I had a little look into just to find out a little bit more when I, when I first discovered it it's like I like to know what these things are and it's just it's, it's a very careful maceration across the different elements before it is vatted together no, yes, it's very good. We actually we sell quite a lot of it. Well, not quite a lot, but it's quite a popular uh, spice rum in the shop. So, so I like to hear. <laughs> uh, young Johnny that like, put me on to it, and he suggested we should stock it. Ah, uh, young Johnny, the, the oldest young man that I know. It's, it's, uh, I think he's, he's a well kept face, and I'm pleased. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Aye. Um, so that, that's great. Um, so what we'll do, as suggested, is during the break we'll put your three questions up and um, finish your presentation on the the penny blue. We'll stop the quiz. Karen will take a note of all the people who have got the answer correct. Yeah. Put a number against their name. So. If there's six people that want to six, there's six people want to get six. And it's only during uh, to question after number five. So after number five, at the end of the night, we'll get you back on and I'll ask you for yeah. a new thing that will be against a name and that person right. will win six uh, taste samples that you can send out. Thank you for oh, that. No, not, not at all. Not at all. Um, just give people a little something just to tease, tease their mind a little bit in between. And I didn't want to make anything too geeky and too nerdy. But, uh, I'm sure they'll. I'm sure they'll use the internet for some of the some of the answers. Oh, definitely. Definitely, I would if I was on the other side. <laughs> 
Oh, well, well. Right, so we are slightly ahead of schedule, folks. So what we'll do is we'll have a 20-minute break, if that's okay. Aye. So uh, 22, 29. Um, we'll back on. And we'll do uh, the next from Penny Blue. And then, and then hopefully, Andy, you'll come back on at the end of the night. Pick a number for us. Okay. Yeah, not a problem, Brian. We'll get you let, uh, let you back to being daddy for the next 20 minutes. I'm, ki I'm kind of hoping my wife is finished with what she's doing so I can hand over. <laughs> well, maybe see the wee one later on then. <laughs> oh, she's fine. She, she, she's just sitting clapping her hands. What, what's her name? Uh, Lula. Sorry? Lula. Lula. Lula, yeah. Where is, can so, you uh, Hola. Hola. Bra Brian saying go to bed. What? Hello, Hiya. What? Hello. Who's this strange man? Well, that's got you. <laughs> Hello, aren't you beautiful? <laughs> you beautiful? Wow. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to take her down. So the next time we'll be able to do it. Yeah, first of all, I'll get her to help me. Man, I stand up for me. Yeah. Okay, then. Uh, <laughs> I'll see you in 20 minutes. Okay. Cheers. Well, that was, uh, that was a quick, quick first half, ladies and gentlemen. Um, during the break, as I say, Karen will be putting up the three questions. Um, you can answer it by uh, answering it on the email to info at tbwatsons.co.uk. And uh, at the end of the night, one of the people who have got the answers correct um, will get a little special prize. So um, enjoy your break, folks. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, the first four. And we'll see you after the break. Thank you very much. Okay, cheers.
Well, good evening again. Welcome to part two of the tasting. Um, I did forget to mention about our raffle prize, as you know. Um, when you order your kit, you have the choice of ordering raffle tickets. And we do have six bottles of rum to be raffled at the end of the evening. So that's <clears throat> after the Lang's Banana Rum. <clears throat> and after we've um, given the prize winner's name for the uh, competition that Andy's kindly um, donated. So you've got approximately 15 minutes to look up the answers. I mean, give us the answers for the quiz that Andy's uh, told us about. And we'll compile the names and we'll ask Andy just to pick a number after the tasting and then we'll do the raffle for the um for the rums that um we've got so um bear with us so if uh andy you're available to step up to the hockey again for the second time this evening that would be grand hello again bonjour um, no. hello <sighs> Bonjour. Yeah, I, I, I'm back. I, I, I no longer have my little helper, so please, please excuse me for earlier. Um, Lola has gone away and is now sitting with my wife while she does have it. So fear is fear. <laughs> so yeah, no thanks. Thanks for having me back on. <laughs> That's no problem whatsoever. Um, we'll just let you start the, the evening again. I'll switch myself off and um, you can take centre stage and talk about the penny blue because we also stopped the egg so perfect a, a toss up of whether you know suggested the VSOP or the egg so we do sell the VSOP as well so we thought well and it's slightly cheaper than the egg so obviously right. um, value for money I think it's pretty good stuff so um I'll let you continue Andy if you don't mind no no worries thank you so yeah, so back to it. <clears throat> um, as Brian was saying there, this is we're now going to move on to number five, and this is going to be the Penny Blue VSOP. So Penny Blue VSOP. This is actually from Medina Still Medine Distillery as well, same as the Spice Hunter. Now I didn't talk too much about Medine when I was talking about Spice Hunter. Partly because it's a small child, and uh, partly because I wanted to save it for talking about it with Penny Blue, because I think Penny Blue shows a lot more of a of a, of a showcase, shall we? Shall we have it uh, for for the rum itself? So, Medina Distillery, as I mentioned previously, is the oldest distillery on Mauritius. Now, if you're anything like me, when I first heard about this and heard about Mauritius, my first thought was, where the hell is that? I know vaguely. So, for those that are desperate to know, it's uh, to the southeast of uh, Africa, so just to the east of Madagascar. So, right within that little sugarcane belt. So, there's that belt which basically straps around the world where anywhere within these two points, shall we say, you can grow sugarcane. And you can see where it's come from the Far East and slowly made its way across to the Caribbean. So... With Medina Distillery and in, in Mauritius, we're be, it's what I would class as a single estate. In that, Medina Distillery grow the sugarcane, they harvest the sugarcane, they press it, they boil it down into molasses, they distill it, they barrel age it, and they bottle it all on the same location. Yeah, and I think that is something that makes it very distinctive for Penny Blue whether it is this one, the VSOP, or any of the other iterations, which I'll mention a little bit later. So we're on the west coast of the island, which is the sunnier side. It's also the drier side. And it's a, a very rich volcanic soil, which gives us a fantastic yield of sugarcane. The other bit to bear in mind that then brings this juice forward is the fact that, as I say, it's single estate. So when we harvest the cane, the length of time it takes for the cane to be taken from the field, there's like 3,300 hectares. The length of time it takes for the cane to leave the field to then being taken away to be harvested, to be processed, crushed for it to extract the sugarcane juice is minimal. Now, if you bear in mind, sugarcane juice is obviously high in sugar, strangely enough, who would have thought it? 
and there's a natural yeast in the air, it cuts down on that slight bit of degradation, which will come about from uh, it fermenting, just beginning naturally. Okay, so we've harvested it, we bring it across, it's pressed straight away, we begin to boil it down into molasses, we then distill it. Now, what Jean-Francois Koenig has done and has chosen to do with this is he want, he's, he's gone low and slow. It's a four column continuous still. Uh, we're not using pot stills or anything like that, and you'll notice that when we come to taste it. It is that lighter bodied rather than big, funky, full of flavour. Um, it's different flavours. So it's lighter and it's more to do with the maturation process, which I'll talk about in a wee second. Uh, so yes, yeah, so the four continuous column stills, low and slow, just to try and get exactly how he wants it. Now, what we'll do is just, actually, no, we'll taste it and then I'll talk a little bit more about some of the history. So, this is bottle number five for you. So, it's lounge. Have a little nose, see what you're thinking about it. I, before I go into any sort of my flavours and, and tastings and so on, I will think about this as being a whiskey drinker's rum. Yeah, and I think some of you will see exactly what I mean when you nose and taste it. So, on the nose, first thing that hits me is the wood, the maturation process. Okay, this has been aged in a mixture of three different casks that are then vatted together. So, X bourbon casks, X whiskey casks, X cognac casks. Okay, uh, European oak, small bit of American oak, and then from the cognac casks, French oak itself, and you can really bring that out there. You've got that classic vanilla note that we'll get from the ex bourbon cask, but then you're getting that little bit of, I get nutmeg, I also get marmalade, like marmalade peel. Have a little taste. And I think for a lot of people, as bizarre as it sounds, if you poured this for them and they didn't see the bottom, they didn't know what it was, I think some people might get confused. As I say, it's a whiskey drinker's rum. It is, it's got your classic notes, that, it's your classic woody notes, your the spice that comes from the oak, a vanilla, there's a little bit of nuttiness, almost like a walnut. And then right on the back palette and at the side, it's like orange peel again okay now why i'm thinking this differentiates from quite a lot of rum is is a how it's made and how the process is but it's a finishing once we've vatted it what we don't do is we don't chill filter it now for the whiskey nerds amongst you will know what i mean by that for those that don't very quick explanation if you're quickly mixing things together and you want to get it out so it's bottled, what will happen if you don't chill filter it, when it gets really cold, you'll see some of the, the fatty molecules inside it will begin to congeal. You know when you're in the supermarket and it's really cold and you walk past the olive oil section and it, some of it looks like it's got milky bits in it? It's exactly the same sort of thing as that. And that is what will happen to this bottle. I'm up here in Aberdeen, and this lives in my garage most of the time, away from the kids. Unless they're going to sit and help me do things. And that's what will happen to this bottle. So it's non-chill filtered. So chill filtered removes that element, but it also removes flavour. So those fatty bits, that's the bits that give us flavour. Uh, the other thing we don't do is we don't add any additives. There's no colourant. Every single bit of colour that you see in this bottle is purely from the cask maturation process. And the last and the most important, Important bit, I think, we don't add any sugar. There is zero sugar added to this. Now, many people have it in their head that rum is supposed to be sweet because it's made from sugar cane. That's, that's, that's our natural thought process. But sugar turns into alcohol, so the alcohol survives the distillation, the sugar doesn't. So it shouldn't be sweet, it should be that dry and like when I've when I've done tastings out with, with with the public at various rum festivals and so on, I have a lot of people say, Oh it's too whiskey for me. Ah, that's fine because it's not going to be for everyone's taste. Yeah? And that's absolutely fine. We're not going to please everyone all the time. So 
Yeah, so that is the, the Penny Blue VSOP. Quick explanation, by the way, because some of you all had the thought of VSOP, wasn't it? Is that not cognac? Correct. That is cognac. And this is what we want to do that's a little bit different as well. When it comes to the world of rum, there's so little legislation. There's a lot of grey areas. There's a lot of grey areas here as well. There's a lot of grey areas that you can get away with. So you can say that it's a Solera system, but it's not actually a Solera system. And you can put down it's an average age of this, that, and the next. What we want to do is we want to give people a ballpark for because also it's going to change as we're vatting different casks because we're, we're not that fussed about the age. We're more interested in the maturity. So VSOP, very special old pale, in the world of cognac, we've applied it here as well because the French are okay with us using it on other things. <laughs> um, and it lets us know that it's between four years and ten years old. Yeah, the average age is about four, four and a half years. I'm not going to lie. Um, we also, as I mentioned, we have the EXO, that is a 10 year old, and that batch changes every time. We're on to, I think, batch seven just now. I've not actually managed to snaffle a sample bottle for myself, but the winner of my little quiz in the middle will get a 50 mil sample, as one of the samples will get a sample of the EXO. Um, so, yeah, the last little thing to say is just explain another bit of why it's called Penny Blue. You'll see this bit here. This is the Penny Blue stamp. Uh, this is from Mauritius, and it is one of the rarest stamps in the world. I think there's 27 of them left in existence, and the last one was sold at auction for, I think, somewhere in the region of $1.4 million. So if you've got any stamp collector friends who don't know that, and it's a nice little fact for you, or if they happen to have one, steal it, sell it, I'll take a 5% commission. Uh, for drinking-wise with Penny Blue, yes, it works as a sipper. Not going to deny that. I will quite often have it as a sipper. But to repeat what I said about Spice Hunter, Coke. Yeah, rum and Coke all the way. Uh, it's great for that, and I tend to use XO more for sipping than the VSOP. Cocktail wise, any classic cocktail where you're not having it overly sweet. So when you're thinking about your sort of prohibition era, that sort of beginning part of the 20th century when the rum cocktail when cocktails were more about the citrus and more about being spirit forward rather than your sweet fruity later concoctions as a perfect for that um myself i love using it in for the vsop i love using it in things like my time it plays up really nicely in there and just adds a little dry orange note just to play off against the orgy um exo makes a banging old-fashioned especially with a little bit of chocolate bitters um and yeah play about with it sip it drink it with coke uh play about with it in cocktails no that was very nice well i knew it was going to be very good because i've heard it <laughs> one or two or eight or nine times to be honest Did so, it. so it's uh it's quite interesting to find out about basically made almost the same way as whiskey, natural colouring and chill filter. And it was quite funny because um, when I was pouring the samples, our storeroom, and I'm sure the staff will agree, our storeroom was concrete floor, uh, sandstone wall. Have I actually got four cellars below the shop? Aye where we keep a lot of spirits and wine and things and when I brought the, the rum through there was a slight haze to it and I thought oh hold on a minute and then I, I read a sunshine filter like a whiskey would be yeah and if you realize that if you can buy like some um a bottle of perno or a car yeah stick it, or stick it somewhere cold and bring it out it's as cloudy as cloudy <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, it, it's almost like that sort of whoosh that you get from absence. It's, it's that same sort of effect. And it is off putting if you don't know what it is. You're like, well, no, what's, what's happened? Has it been tainted with something? Or something? And it is a little bit unsettling. And I can understand why the vast majority of companies, for the vast majority of the spirits that we all love and enjoy and drink, I can see why they do it. Uh, and it's something that I think. Doug and Jean-Francois wanted to do differently because it is coming from that whiskey background. 
Yeah, no, it's uh, it shows as well. So, um, thank you very much for that. Um, at the moment, we've got uh, twenty names. Now, I did say. Now, I did say that we do it at the end of the when you come to the party. Yeah. Give me a number between one and twenty, please, and the winner will be announced. Okay. Uh, so, uh, sorry, you cut out ever so slightly on the number just now. Sorry, Brian. Yeah. Okay. Let's go with number. Let's go with lucky number seven. Lucky number seven. Okay. Number seven. Okay. Now, this theme will actually not be a surprise to you if you've been watching um, over the last half hour or so, because this person has been um, asking a few questions. So obviously, <laughs> given comments. Um, well done, Gary Gillespie. Perfect. Perfect. Well, Gary, what I'll do is I'm going to batch up a little 50 mil sample of the original recipe, Spice Hunter, <clears throat> a little bit of Penny Blue XO, a little bit of the Penny Blue single cask, which you don't often see, and then berries, we do our own independent single cask, the berry, berry's own selection, so I'm going to select three of my rums as well. So it's about... Just under half a bottle of rum of six different varieties, and I'll speak to Brian and Karen. You can get that shipped out to you in the next week or so. If you just um, send it to us, Andy, we'll um, give it to Gary. Well, eventually. <laughs> I might slip in a couple of samples for you guys as well, then. Five mil samples. <laughs> well, Perfect. We'll will be before Gary gets them anyway. So. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Uh, uh. Nah, thanks for having me, guys. Great. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank Enjoy you. the rest of the evening. Um, well, uh, before we get uh, Dean on, I just have to say <laughs> that um, a few people have commented that they didn't buy raffle tickets. They never thought about buying raffle tickets. Um, you still can buy raffle tickets because... I have the book. So if you want to go and buy raffle tickets, um, what's the best one to go for? The website to speak well, to you? From raffle tickets. So. Aye, but if you just go to the website and go to um, rum raffle tickets, you can buy them now and it's, you've still got maybe half an hour or so. And funny enough, <laughs> by pure coincidence, Gary Gillespie has just bought some raffle tickets online. So you never know, we might be speaking to Gary later on because uh, the way his luck's going, do the lottery, mate, do the lottery. So you still can buy some raffle tickets, folks. And um, what we'll do is we'll message you and let you know what your numbers are. Because obviously I'll write them down anyway. Um, so there's time, there's time to do that. So um, well done, Gary. Uh, you've got to be in it to win it, and you certainly were. So uh, now we go on to uh, our sixth rum of the evening uh, with uh, Dean, with Diplomatico. So, <coughs> Dean, if you can come on board again, thank you very much. Good evening again, sir. Good evening. How are we? Oh, we're doing not too bad at the moment, I have to say. So Good. I've had fun sipping along as well. Thank you for sending over the little packs. Yeah, well, it just, just <laughs> dawned on me. Um, it just dawned me, Dean, that when we do this uh, tasting with, <coughs> with other people, when we did them in Dumfries, we would have one guest speaker coming down to do whiskies. <coughs> Excuse me. Or one guest speaker coming down to do gins. This is different because we've got five guest speakers tonight talking about eight rums. And the last rum tasting, I thought, the people who are doing the talking aren't doing the tasting. So it was a bit of fun. I thought, well, Sandy's all out of kit. No, no, I really appreciate that. It's been crackers. The last penny blue was delicious. Well, what, I did tell, what I did tell you 
I didn't tell you was he still owed me twenty one quid, mate. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, send, I'll send you <laughs> Angus's details then. You can sort that out for me. <laughs> now I've got your attention. <laughs> yeah. Big big Gus can sort that out for me. <laughs> uh, okay. It's uh, a privilege that we give you the kit so you can join in the fun at the end no, of the day. Oh, uh, again, again, Dean, uh, you have the stage. Um, you're going to talk about the next two rums. Yeah, so they're both. Uh, so, uh, yeah. At your own pace and leisure. Away you go, young man. Thank you very much, Brian. Evening, ladies and gents. Hope we're well. Um, sixth run, sixth run of the evening. It's not a bad Friday to be locked in. Uh, so, as Brian said, my name's Dean, and I work for a, a company called Speciality Brands. So, we look after a whole portfolio of different rums. Um, I've been fortunate enough, actually, to do a Dram Busters before, where we had some Hamden Estate and some Black Tot. So, this time, we're going to focus on uh, Diplomatico. So, we're going to take you away to far warmer climates, to Venezuela which is where Diplomatico is from. Uh, we're going to start off with well, the first one we're starting off with is the Reserva Exclusiva. So this is what it looks like. It is by far the most recognizable uh, of the rums from Diplomatico. Uh, it's actually been made since 1989, but it hasn't been in the UK since like 2006. So it's got quite, um, quite a fan, quite a good fan base at the moment, is Diplomatico. And what a lot of people don't know, it's actually a family-owned business. So it's owned by the Ballesteros family. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about a little bit about background about Venezuela, uh, a little bit about the family and the distillery whilst you sip away. Um, and as Andy says, I don't want to sort of uh, the inception and start talking about flavour notes. I'd like you guys to have a have a little sip while I'm chatting. Uh, if you, I'm pretty sure some of you have cracked on already, even though I can't see you. Yeah. So Venezuela, obviously South America, just north of the just north of the equator. Uh, very very hot, very humid, very very tropical. Huge, 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 huge country. So you can have anything from the Andes to beautiful beaches to thick Amazon rainforest. And where we're from, uh, Diplomatico, from a little town called uh, La Miel, which is about four or five hours, sometimes six, uh, depending on uh, the roads from Caracas out west, uh, out towards the Amazon and also uh, near the Andes as well. Uh, big, big sugarcane producers down there. Um, huge, huge amounts of sugar, actually, which is why they set up these perfect good conditions for it. So the distillery in itself is actually relatively new in the grand scheme of things. People talk about some distilleries being two, three hundred years old. Ours was built in the 1950s, so in 1959. And it was actually built by some locals and Seagrams. So those of you who are old enough, uh, Seagrams were a huge, huge Canadian sort of spirit giant. Um, uh, a lot of their brands are now with uh, with um, Diageo, so they actually saw this huge sugar, uh, big sugar and big oil boom uh, in Venezuela in the late fifties. So they set up a big, big distillery in La Miel, and they brought, they were at the time they were making lots of different types of spirits. They were making whiskies and everything for the local market, if you like, and obviously rums. Uh, so they brought in lots of different equipment from all around, uh, all over the shop actually. So they actually brought a something called a, a batch kettle still from Canada, actually from the old Crown Royale, who make Canadian rye. Um, it kind of looks like a child's drawing of a submarine on the top. Uh, they brought pot stills over from Scotland and they brought over French column stills as well. So they can make a whole, whole sort of portfolio of spirits there, which they were making for a long, long time. And then in 2002, uh, a family called the Ballesteros family actually bought the distillery. I bought them on from Seagram's and sort of took on and started focusing on Diplomatico. Um, really, really started putting and expanding the brand and started exporting in about 2006. And I say they started with the Reserva Exclusiva, which has a very, very, very special part in their hearts. And the, uh, the family is still very much involved today. So Senor, uh, Jose Senior is over at the distillery pretty much every day. Jose Junior is over in Spain, looking after, uh, usually in Jerez, drinking lots of sherry and having a gr good old time. But yeah, they're very much involved in the whole whole process. Um, and Venezuela, um, huge, huge run producers. You've got Santa Teresa, Pampero, and some of the big multinational brands that come from it. And Diplomatico, one of the biggest, in well, biggest private ones in, in, in Europe, uh, which is cool. So much so that Diplomatico, um, well, Venezuela actually have a DOC, so a denomination of origin, which sort of governs how they make their runs. So all of the rum, all of the sugar has to come from Venezuela. 
Uh, you have to bottle between 40 and 50 percent. So you'll never see an overproof rum coming from Venezuela, but you'll never see something like 47, 37. Um, and it has to be aged for a minimum of two years. So in the Venezuela, all rum is aged for a minimum of two years before it can legally be called rum. Um, similar to other countries like uh, Cuba, uh, Puerto Rico, and even Australia. Australia, Ray Nephew. I'm a big fan of Ray Nephew from Jamaican, Jamaican Overproof. That's not classed as a rum in, in Australia, and you can't buy it there, which is strange. But in Venezuela, all of their rums have to be a minimum of two years as well. So you're going to have that cask uh, influence, lots of vanillins and stuff from the uh, American white oak that you have to use. Uh, that's part of it as well. You have to use white uh, white oak casks. And you used to have to bottle in Venezuela because they're having a few political issues at the moment. They bottle over in Panama just so they can get it out to the world, to the families. So uh, this one is actually made from molasses and sugarcane honey. So uh, Andy was saying about the process of producing molasses. Essentially, you cut down your sugarcane. We all have our own fields as well. We've got about a thousand hectares. Huge, huge operation. Uh, once you chop down the sugar cane, you have to crush it as soon as possible to extract the juices. Then, essentially, to create it into sort of, uh, molasses and separate the sugar crystals, you essentially boil it and put it for a centrifuge. First time you do that, you're going to have a um, sort of molasses or sugar cane honey around 40% sugar, maybe a little bit higher, 40-50% sugar. So it's a really, really high sugar concentration. Uh, and then that's what they call sugar cane honey, the first step of the process. And then when you put it through second, third fourth time, if you like, uh, that's when you get molasses. So we make a combination of both of them. So, wow, I'm hoping someone's tried the rum. <laughs> so the, this one is, so this one is the flagship. Uh, it is, 80% of it is a 12 year old pot still rum. So the pot still makes a heavier distillate with a lot more, um, a lot more body, a lot more character, a lot more of those fruitier flavors, a lot of that tropical fruit and banana that you might pick out from it. Uh, the last 10% or the last 20% is split between the other two stills. So you've got a, a French column still, uh, not too dissimilar, I imagine, to the one that they use at Penny Royal. Um, so it makes a light, quite light, quite elegant, uh, very, very dry and elegant uh, spirit. And then we also have got that batch kettle that used to make quite a rich, quite a buttery kind of one. And when you bring them all together after the aging maturation, uh, we get this little beauty. I would like mention Diplomatico are quite uh, transparent about it. They do add a bit of sugar into this one. That's why it's quite sweet. That makes uh, a great introduction. So when I was bartending, or when I started bartending about 16 years ago, uh, this was one of the sort of first sort of other runs you st I started to try. Something a little bit more age, a little bit different from the sort of supermarket shelves you buy. And it really, really sort of makes you sort of stand up and listen a little bit to like what rum could taste like and does. And when I used to work for another rum brand, it used to be really frustrating actually, because uh, this was always my brother's favorite rum. And he never, it used to really frustrate me no matter how much free stuff I gave him from my old company. He was like, it's just not as good as Diplomatico, which was a bit of a, a, bit of a slap in the face, but uh, we're there now. Right. I'm hoping we've all tried some. So this is a 40% ABV. So, Nice premium end of things. Uh, so I've let you guys try it, but for me on the nose, for me, it's got that quite nice sort of like creme brulee sort of custody kind of notes to it. Chocolate orange is a big one, big, big, um, big note that we get. It's got obviously that fresh sort of foam banana kind of flavor on the nose. And uh, a colleague of mine, John, a good friend as well, he describes this as like a big molasses cuddle. It's like a nice little, uh, Nice little treat after dinner, a nice little, nice little sipper. Yeah, so we do recommend that people um, sip this one. Still quite cheap. Mix of suggestions. Yeah, Gary. I was going to say, uh, this one makes a really good old fashioned. So really, really simple because it already has a slight of that sweetness to it. You just get some Angostura bitters or something like that, maybe some orange bitters. Stir it down over ice, maybe a touch more sugar if you fancy, with a little bit of orange. Ooh. I haven't tried that whiskey. I'm gonna, is that a good thing? <laughs> uh, also, uh, we always recommend having it just with some chocolate uh, and something with like ginger beer is a really good, um, 
see the Bundy one that you had up earlier, Brian, works really well because that's nice and spicy, sort of classic sort of uh, dark and stormy style cocktail. Funny, funny you should mention chocolate, Dean. Rum and raisin. Nice. Don't, don't smell anything. You can sometimes get the lint one with the salted chocolate, and it kind of tastes like rum and raisin ice cream together. But you've, you've gone straight ahead with the rum and raisin ice. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, I personally like uh, ginger ale. So Fever Tree have released some really good ginger ales. There's one like over Christmas sort of time they release it's like a spiced orange. So it's got that nice sort of nice citrusy notes to it as well that works really well with this. That wedge of orange, uh, nice little highball you can sip on all night long. Uh, that's the way I like to drink it anyway. I say old fashions, uh, even sort of Negroni styles. Then off the gin. And get the rum in much better. It's called like a it's called a right hand cocktail. I'm not gonna chin that, I'm gonna save that for afterwards. Uh so now I'm gonna move on quickly to the next one that we're gonna try from Diplomatico. And it's actually brand new. So we only got this in the country. We launched it last month. So we launched it at London Cocktail Week. Um and it's called the there's a the selection de familia. So it's a sort of dark, bluish, dark bottle. Uh, and it's the brand, brand, brand new. So it's only in it's only in France, Czech Republic, Denmark, and the UK at the moment. So it's gonna be very, very small amounts around Europe and very, very specific markets and countries to be able to get it. It's because they want to sort of, they wanted to give something new, uh, so sort of like a, the new evolution basically uh, from Diplomatico. So they do have some younger rums as well. So we have a Planas, which is a six-year-old right clear rum that they've filtered. It's really buttery, lots of coconut kind of notes, more for your daiquiris and stirred down martini style drinks. They've got one called a Mantuano, which is a little bit spicier, more for your rum punches and your highball style drinks. And they wanted to produce this one. So where the Reserva Exclusiva has been so, so successful, uh, and a lot of people have grown up with it. So I did as well. It was one of the first sort of start, that, that style of rum that I tried. Uh, a lot of people's palates are evolving and kind of when they go back to things, they're like, yeah, I still really like it, but I want something more. So this is what they've done with the selection de familia. So it's a sl little slight, uh, sli um, slightly higher ABV. So this one's 43% uh, just to carry those flavors through. Uh, blend slightly different. The family are actually involved in the blending of this a lot. So usually we've got a couple of chaps called Nelson and Tito. Uh, they're the master stillers, master blenders, or the, the maestros. Uh, they've been there for about, well, Nelson's been there for about 30 years. Tito's been there for about 40. Uh, they know their way around the barrels and the aging warehouses, which have about 10 aging warehouses. And all of our barrels are sort of stacked up on their bellies. Huge, huge place, really hot, really, really humid. So you get a lot of interaction with the barrels really, really quickly. Uh, so you get a lot of flavor developing very, very quickly, but you're also losing an awful lot. Um, so they call it the angel share. So we lose about 8% per year as opposed to the... Uh, no, no, I don't think. I think uh, if you've got a lower ABV, um, the, the, the sweetness comes out a little bit more um, there, Gary. The slightly higher, uh, this is slightly drier as well. This one isn't as sweet as the Reserva Exclusiva. It about, has about half the amount of sugar as this one. Uh, so they want it to fall in line because uh, um, there's some new legislation coming into the UK or Europe in general. I'm not sure what's going to happen soon, but Europe anyway, uh, that if you, you don't have to disclose your amount of sugar, if it's below 20 grams of sugar per litre, uh, if into rums. So a lot of, a lot of brands now are either tweaking their recipes or if they're spice runs and things like that, it's fine because they put that on the label anyway. But a lot of us having to change a lot of things. So you'll see a few brands shift chopping and changing. Uh, so with this one, so the family wanted to start using a lot more of their casks and make something a bit more complex. Uh, Tito and uh, Nelson were involved a lot as well, obviously. So what we do, we have a big Spanish influence as well, as I mentioned uh, earlier that um, Jose uh, Jr. lives in Jerez. Uh, so Jerez is where you get all of the sherries from Spain. So you get the finos, your olorosos, the big nutty, quite dry, quite fruity numbers, 
and your pentrahumanes, which tastes like those little minute made little boxes of raisin that you used to get, or I used to get as a kid. So super sweet, super plummy. Uh, and what so, when some of the releases we've got, some of the older releases, we finished in for a whole year or two in Oloroso and uh, Pedro Jimenez tasks. Uh, so because we only used them once, we started to using, we started aging stock in them as well. So we've got, this is actually a complete mixture of casks, which have all been aged separately from the three different stills. So 90% of this is the heavier pot still rum. And the other 20 the other 10 percent is made up of the lighter spicy rums and the nice buttery ones um, the 90 percent of it is 12 years so it's 12 years in brand new american oak casks ex bourbon casks which we get the big vanilla big spicy notes uh, and then also ex single malt casks and also the um uh, the pedro jimenez and the oloroso casks as well so it's a, you've got more complexities coming on the sherry casks, I'm sure if you're whiskey fans, you'll know all about it. I'm a big fan of Glen Farkless, and they do a lot of sh or just full maturation on sherry. So you're getting a lot more of that sort of nice stewed Christmas cake, kind of stewed down fruits, raisins, sultanas, uh, and also sort of nice, real nice nutty chocolatey you notes know, coming through as well. I'm a big fan of this. Uh, I have to say, this is the first time I've tried it, obviously, because we only got it in, what, three weeks ago? Mm. At least it. You're one of the first. Yeah, so we, we only got it in uh, the beginning of October, so. Oh, that's another string to my bow. Yeah. <laughs> that's three strings to my bow I've got now. It's going well at the moment. Hey, hey, you must be doing something, right? And I definitely do get raisins, but I have to admit, that could be the reason. Yes. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting dark chocolate, I'm getting fruits, I'm getting richness, definitely getting the raisins. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but that's yeah, like nice figgy sort of dates as well, just like really nice sort of stone fruits that have been really cooked down and stewed. Yeah, and it's um and it's it, it's got the colour of I think what a rum should look like to most people who are Maybe not used to drinking rums. I mean, just a nice dark colour, and obviously the sherry casks and that have affected the colour of it. But um, yeah, you know, they do use caramel to sort of correct it, and sort of they get so they can get a uniform sort of colour going along it. Um, they they're quite open about that as well. Most people are, if they do do that. Yeah, and they'll, they'll say the the family are very 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 um, mindful about the local environment as well. They do lots of planting of trees, lots of initiatives over in the Amazon. All of their uh, liquid waste and everything gets recycled. Uh, so they're, they're doing a lot for the environment and making damn tasty rum whilst they do it. Oh, I have to say very good. <laughs> uh, on a slightly, a slightly different note, um, because of the raffle tickets that we've been selling over the last 15, 20 minutes, um, instead of having six bottles of rum as a prize, we've now got seven. Bottles of rum. So well done for those people who are participating in the raffle and adding to the kitty. Um, so we've now got seven uh, bottles of rum, which we'll do at the end. But um, I, have, no, I have to say, I'm, I'm, I was looking forward to this one and the fact that it's just been new. And as you say, everybody knows the, the, uh, the Diplomatico Reserva uh, as being a, 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 the base of um, Diplomatico. Them. The main brand as the main rum as you know yeah it's definitely um, the most recognizable out of their range yeah and it's, it's it's nice to see something coming in that's different as well and the fact that they're only doing it in four countries yeah there uh, will be more at the moment it's only it's, i think they're gonna, only going to do it in europe and maybe singapore yeah. right. it's not going to be all over the world it's going to be a lot, lot smaller and, and the fact that we are one of the first ones as well yeah, yeah, yeah. So their focus again, they wanted to yeah, focus on smaller independents rather than the big. Yeah, well done then. Yeah. It's good. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that, guys. Thank you very much. That was uh, it's good to have um, two rooms side by side from the, the same family. You can continue the story and tell the difference. So um, mm. thank you very much for your time. No worries. Thank you. Looking forward to the next one. Uh, I'm going to 
hopefully to enjoy the rest of the evening, but you've only got one more room to do. <laughs> I've got plenty more in my cupboard, don't you? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, cheers. Enjoy, enjoy cheers, the evening. Brian. Cheers. Well, that was very interesting. Very good. And now the last rum of the evening. We basically uh, touched on it earlier on when we were talking about banana rums. Um, and I have to say, so pleased that when I saw this coming on with Ian McLeod, that uh, Lang's banana rum was coming on back onto the market. Batch 2, as it's um, called at the moment. Totally different packaging from the previous one. Um, but uh, we have uh, Michael coming on next to tell the story of the, the Land Brothers, hopefully, and um, the banana rum. So, Michael, if you're still... Good evening. Good evening. Hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. How you doing? I'm fine, fine. Thanks for joining us this evening. Not a problem at all. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I was quite excited when uh, Danielle was telling us in advance that Langs were coming out with a banana rum. Um, I heard the story uh, earlier on that we used to sell a lot of it in Dumfries. Yeah, there's, I know it's, it's, it's actually quite interesting because there's been a lot of people who usually kind of on the coastal side, the, the kind of northeast, um, kind of like Aberdeen North, I've heard a lot of kind of good things about Lang's Banana Rum and there's, there's a kind of good, a great excitement from a lot of um, specialist retailers like yourself for Lang's Banana Rum coming back. Uh, because yeah. they have such fond memories of it, and I think um, I think it's I think it's interesting. I mean, crazy when you think about launching a rum in, uh, in the summer of twenty twenty. But hey ho, um, yeah. McLeod would never do things by half measures. So, well, funny enough, when when I was pre pouring the rums, um, obviously we've left the Lang's banana rum to the end because it's such a cool flavour. Um, Karen came downstairs and I was pouring them through in the back room and she went, who's having bananas for lunch? I can smell bananas. <laughs> I went, oh, it's me. I'm pouring the rum. She went, oh, you can smell the banana. I said, well, that's why it's called banana rum, really. Isn't it? So, um, what, we'll it is one of those things. I'll let you take the stage, Michael, for the next 10 minutes or so. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you, Brian. So good evening, ladies and gents. Um, as Brian's introduced me, my name is Michael. And I work for a, a company called E McLeod Distillers. So E McLeod Distillers are more famously known for um, the production of whiskey. Uh, a couple of distillers, Glengoyne and, and Tam do up in Speyside, Glasgow. Uh, Glengoyne just outside Glasgow, um, and also the owners of Edinburgh Gin. But why we're here, we're here to talk about Lang's Banana Rum. And, and as Brian Brian's mentioned, we've recently recently relaunched. Um, Lang's banana rum. So as you can kind of see, anybody who has a taste in front of me, probably the, the first thing to do is to pour ourselves a rum. I'm going to have to do this as I'm holding my phone at the same time. I might have to try and uh, I'm going to have to put my phone down to open up my bottle. Um, I'm going to pop that into my glass while you do the same. Hopefully, I'll let it sit there just for a couple of seconds so I can aerate it slightly. Um, so Lang's banana rum. So I can show you a bottle here. Um, this is Lang's Banana Rum. If anybody has ever tried Lang's Banana Rum before, as Brian said, the packaging is completely different. And this is original original recipe number two, and we'll touch about uh, why it's called original recipe number two in a second. But what is Lang's? I mean, what is Lang's Rum? Well, it's a blend of unaged and ex bourbon American white white oak cast aged Jamaican rums. So it's a blend of unaged and Amer American white oak cast um, of Jamaican rums. Molasses rich pot and column distilled. Uh, blended and infused with the natural fruit flavors from from banana from bananas. Um, it's one of those ones. As, as soon as you kind of open up the bottle, um, you can just smell that real rich, almost kind of ripe banana smell. I think that's the best way to describe it. Is almost ripe bananas. It's not fresh bananas. It's really ripe bananas. Um, almost bananas that are ready for for making into banana banana bread. Um, so Jamaica, obviously home home of aromatic rum funk. Um, known for their kind of smooth drinking rums. Um, and and one thing that Langs, we've we've tried to we've tried to capture with the really the relaunch um, is that sort of carnival spirit um so it's the kind of the, the good times balance of the flavor in the rum so it's, it's trying to get the trying to get that that nice balance between 
what we think is, is something that can be enjoyed over many different occasions, but also the, the flavour needs to needs to really kind of stand stand true. You can't call yourself a banana run without without being without smelling and tasting of banana. So why the name Langs? Um, Brian Brian touched on it just just before. So Gavin and Alexander Lang were wine, wine merchants based in Glasgow in around the eighteen sixties. So if anybody has a bottle in the house, they'll see that. Um, I don't know if I can quickly show you here. Is the original import is eighteen sixty one? So I mean, this is this is a this has been going for along for a long, long time, um, and they they used to kind of set down recipes for a whole host of portfolio of spirits. So they did obviously Scotch whiskey wines, but they also included rums into into their portfolio as well, and they they expanded their kind of trade partnerships. Um, all over the world, but one of the key areas they, ex they expanded those partnerships were in the West Indies. And Clydeside Docks were the kind of hub of um, exotic goods, where exotic goods came into Scotland. Um, and, and the Langs Brothers, that being their home city, they would, they would take inspiration from these seasonal fruits from the Caribbean and use them in their blending process. Um, so why original import 1861? This is the original launch date of Langs Banana Rum. Um, by the Langs brothers in Glasgow. So as I said, 1861 is a kind of key date when we when we talk about the history of Langs, Langs Banana Rum. And as I mentioned, we we relaunched in, in August. So it's really it's been a real interesting process for for us to kind of look back in history and and look through old man manuscripts and and try, if anybody is is got an old bottle out there, I'll pay some great money for an old bottle. If anybody can give me the original recipe number one. Um, I'll pay some good money and, and take it off your hands. So why original recipe number two? Well, the resurrection of Lang's Banana Rum, we've brought back the exceptional award-winning banana taste using the Jamaican rum as per the original recipe. So the original recipe always used Jamaican uh, Jamaican rum and used those those bananas um, from the from the Clyde docks. And one of the one of the one things that kind of springs springs to mind when we're looking back on the history is where just at the end of, of the world war when when we started to see exotic imports come back in to the Clyde um one of the the songs that could be heard through the streets of Glasgow were the bananas are back um, so people used to get really excited about I, I can imagine after living on rations and, and not having exotic fruits coming in into into our little land nation that we are in the UK and it must have been quite exciting to have have something like bananas come come back into back into your city. So we're, we're setting a kind of 37.5% ABV. It's probably the best time to have a little taste of it, have a little smell of it. Um, we can kind of, we can talk through the, the kind of tasting nose, the, the, the tasting notes. So on the nose, again, banoffee pie. Yeah, it's one of those ones, it's got that real almost kind of underlying vanilla. Um, I think when, when you kind of, when I stick my beak right in there, so it's, it's very sweet and fruity on the nose. Those bold, you're hit with those bold, ripe banana flavours as soon as you as soon as you kind of take 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 a smell. The warm banana bread, with that kind of brown sugar. I mean, it's almost kind of lots of sweeties. You've got that candy floss. You've got those kind of uh, foamy bananas. I've heard a couple of uh, the previous the previous guys say, and you've got that kind of subtle cinnamon and, and a little bit of vanilla under there as well. So I can kind of see how you get that banana pie. So in the palate. Quite thick, syrupy. Um, you get that big hit of sweet banana, and then the rum flavour really starts to kind of build on the palate. So again, it's it's important for us when when we talk about limes that we're not just trying to create a real forefrontal flavoured rum. It's we want the quality of the rum to be the building blocks of, of everything that we kind of move forward on. So keep your eyes out if you're if you're interested in some other flavours. Um, and then the finish, you've got that kind of initial heavy banana flavour, it reduces and kind of lingers, but again, you've got those rumlots sticking through, so cheers everyone. I hope this is, I think, your eighth rum, so I hope um, I hope your palate's still up for for searching for some flavours. You don't have to worry about that, Michael. Um, the people who are drinking <laughs> rums are perfect. <laughs> some yeah, so... <laughs> you used to drinking, used to drinking samples. I mean, the great, the greatest thing is I've I've worked my way through the samples as well, and uh, I'm feeling I'm feeling quite warm inside, and I'm and I'm fairly enjoying it. It's, it's great for a kind of cold 
almost streak rainy evening in Edinburgh, I can tell you that. Yeah, well, I've been, I've been taking half the samples. I mean, that's that's what's left out of my bottles. <laughs> I'm funny. Busy day tomorrow, so um, I'm looking forward to finishing the, the bottles tomorrow night. So at the minute, Karen and I are just having a sip of half of the samples that you've got. So basically, we've got a quarter of what everybody else has been having. But that's enough to get the flavour, the aroma and the smell. Yeah. So I think so. Lang, Lang's is, is categorised as a spirit drink. Just um, it's, well, it's categorised as a flavoured rum in the whole kind of the whole category because we obviously we add we add flavour into there post post distillation, um, and I think it comes into the, kind of that spirit drink category with the kind of EU regulations as well. Just because we add add flavour post distillation, but I mean the rum is still there. You can still you can taste that 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 Jamaican funk. You can taste the kind of rich molasses that. You, the molasses and the pot still is coming through, um, and that was really important for us. And and um, I think I've I've never tasted Lang's number one. I've never tasted the original. I have found the bottle. There's a girl in Partick who has who has a bottle of it. She used to be a sales rep for, and used to sell Lang's banana rum. And I've pleaded with her for the last four months, and I've offered her silly amounts of money to try and get a bottle of it, and she's just not parting with it. Um, but I'd love, I'd love to taste the original recipe. I think there's a few people in Dumfries have got it. Because over the years, a few of them have been coming in saying, you know, do you think it's worth something? I've said, yeah, it's worth something. But I cannot remember who they are. But Dumfries being a wee tune, I'm sure word will get about. And if anybody has got in Dumfries, if anybody has got the original Lang's Banana Rum, um, if they could give me a phone, please. I won't tell Michael, but <laughs> discuss things. Yeah. Um, well, I, can, I, we can make it a very sweet deal for we can make it a very sweet deal for that person who has it, who is willing to part with an original Lang's banana rum. As I said, we own another couple of distilleries, and it's it, I mean it's, it's highly valued for us something like that because if we can get our hands on kind of one or two bottles or three bottles, we can. We can open up a bottle and we can actually go back to the original recipe and we can start breaking it down as well and um, so it's, it's kind of it's really interesting when you when you try and resurrect a brand or you try and resurrect a spirit and um, how you how you can learn from the past and it's just impossible to find a bottle i mean i've looked on every auction site you can you can think of um i think the last time anybody had a bottle must have been in the mid 90s i want to say kind of early 90s and mid 90s was the last time bottles were kind of floating about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's one thing as well I forgot to mention. Oh, sorry, Brian. I forgot to mention that we, we call it a gold medal rum. And um, why, why, is, why is it called a gold medal rum? Well, in 1866, we won a gold medal, the Edinburgh International Exhibition for Spirits. So it's something we're trying. It's something that we do have aspirations for within the category. We will be entering into IWSC awards and over the next time and, and try and get back to that kind of great, great place the Langs Banana Rum was was known for and respected for. Yeah, I think um, I can remember it in the pub that, as I say, we now own the nineties. My brother-in-law would be able to tell me more specifically, but I think it was the early nineties. It was it was definitely still there. Yeah, I know. I've seen a bottle. I've seen a bottle. I think it was nineteen ninety three. But I mean, I was three years old at the time, so there's no way that I'm going to be able to was was had any sort of earshot of it. I think it's one of those ones that you'll maybe find at the back of the cabinet if uh, if you're ever clearing things out. Um, but yeah, he he'd be known on Drambusters. We are looking for a couple of bottles, and and uh, I'd love if you could help us out, please. <laughs> Well, we'll, we'll put the word out, don't you worry. We've actually, obviously, um, as we were wholesalers, we've still got our um, accounts from years ago. So Karen has said she's maybe going to have a wee look see to see when um, the last time we actually sold or had banana rum in our books. Um, oh, awesome. it was when we sold them. So definitely can remember it. 
it's it's oh. interesting. I think it's it's one of those ones that because and you you you'll obviously remember it when when you first had lines or first tasted lines banana rum, and um, speaking to kind of different people all over the kind of drinks the drinks category from just uh, spirit lovers to people who've worked in the drinks trade for the last 20 30 40 years um it was a spirit they remember and it's always something that, that a lot of people tried before especially in scotland whether you're down in Dumfries or on the kind of east east coast of east coast of scotland northeast coast um langsburg was a really big brand um so yeah it's, uh, it's it's great to be back, and I hope I hope everybody has enjoyed it. I hope everybody does enjoy it, uh, and and keep your keep your eyes peeled because we'll we'll definitely be we'll definitely be trying to trying to bring the, the Langs brand. We'll move it forward with not not just banana. Well, I was going to say I know and you know, but what's coming up in the future? And um, Stephen was talking about cargo cult doing the. Doing a banana rum, and I said, "Well, fair enough. Obviously, fair enough. We could do the cargo cult banana rum at the next rum tasting." But I think there might be a couple of lands, different rums that we could do in the foreseeable future. Do you not think? <laughs> yeah, I, th I think so. There's there's a, there's a high possibility, um, and and yeah, we'd we'd love to we'd love to talk about that if if that if that moment in time actually comes to fruition. Um, but yeah, again, again, you you can pick up Langs. Obviously, you you have your offer price um, until until the end of November at, at twenty pounds um, with yourselves. And again, it's a rum that can be drank in any way that you can you can possibly think you can have in cocktails. I think the one thing that we wanted to we wanted to create was a, as was I always I always base a rum really on the kind of daiquiri that it makes, and this is an incredible daiquiri. Um, you can have it with coke, you can have it with ginger beer, and again, just great in the fridge, cold or over over ice. Um, it's it's completely inoffensive. It's not something that's going to blow your head off as soon as you taste it. So, so yeah, long long may the future of Langs be bright. Yes, good. Yes, um, great way to finish an evening. Actually, to um, talk about the past, but uh, the future as well of of Langs Brothers. Of what yeah. was and what is and what's going to be. Yeah, that's uh, uh, exciting, exciting, exciting times. I think that's one thing that we we all can need to we need to get back to is there will be things in the future and we can all stick through and, and see see these difficult times through and, and we'll all be there all we'll be there on the other side. Yep, great. Well, thank you for your time, Michael. Thank you very um, much. Hope the word goes out uh, about the original banana rum and if we do get any inquiries we shall pass them on direct to yourself or pass them on to Daniel or Danielle who will pass them on um, to you Yeah I think so, Danielle's watching so if you, if you pass them to Danielle she can take the credit yeah. for it I know, I certainly know that over the years a few people have came in specifically saying oh do you think it's worth anything and I said well I don't really know but hopefully those people if they're not watching Somebody might know who they are and um, get in contact with us and we'll pass the details on to yourself yeah. through Daniel. So, I really, anyway, I really appreciate you. that. Okay, thank, thank you, you very young much. Man. Bye now. Speak to you maybe next year or something, the next time we're doing a tasting. 100%, I'm up for that anytime. Okay, thank you very Cheers. much. Good night. Right. Uh, well, folks, that's the, the end of the, uh, the tasting. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, the prices are on offer for the next couple of weeks. Um, you can order online over the weekend uh, to give us a head start, or you can just pop into the shop um, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, but do bring in your order form uh, so that you can get the prices um, that we've put down tonight. So, as you can see, it's raffle time, ladies and gentlemen. So... If we can bring the version So the first three prizes uh, will be a bottle of the Virgin Gorda British Caribbean rum. Okay, this is at forty percent. It's about thirty-four quid a bottle, and we have three bottles. So the first three people shall get. Um, a bottle. So, here we go. So, you know, there's no higgity-jiggy-pokery. 
Okay. <laughs> For first one, all the fives. Five, five, five. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Five, five, five. Mary Bell. So, Mary. Okay, well done. Uh, Karen can do the next one. <coughs> Five, three, two. Jay Wilson. Well done. Six o six. P Styles. Well done, fam. Congratulations, Pam. So the next uh, two will get a bottle of Smith and Cross traditional Jamaica rum. So this is for the next two numbers. Yeah. Seven to eight. And seven to eight is David McLean. Well done, David. If you're not in it, you didn't win it. So there you go. <laughs> seven two nine. Would you believe that? Seven two nine. D McLean. That's just the way it goes. Two numbers signed. They're well shuff shuffled, so he saw me do it. So Karen's shuffling them again. And this is for a bottle of white rum. The next two winners, a four-year-old Flora de Cana. Extra circle white rum. Five, three, seven. M. Bell. And lastly, here we go. Six five two and six five two is Johnny Walters. Well done, Johnny. Okay, so that's seven prizes for uh, tonight. So thank you very much. It's uh, a bit of fun at the end. As I say, all the tickets are sh shuffled, as you can see, and if they come out. No, one or two numbers apart. That's just the way it is. They're well, they're well shuffled when they're put in. They're well shuffled um, as we do them. It's a bit of fun at the, the end of the evening. Um, thank you very much for all your support. Thank you very much for participating in the, the rum tasting. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's a good opportunity to meet five people from the industry to talk about um, their rums. A uh, good opportunity for yourselves to sample eight rums that you wouldn't think about buying. Enter the quiz, a bit of fun. Enter the raffle, <laughs> again, a bit of fun. It's a Friday night, what else would you be doing? Um, it, it's, uh, it, it's certainly different from what we'd be doing before. Um, and we'll certainly continue doing things like that um, just to keep people interested in doing something on a Friday night. Uh, don't forget about your local whiskey, wine merchant, rum merchant. We're here, local family business. We're trying to do our bit to keep everybody entertained um, and to ensure that they're enjoying themselves. So 
Um, hopefully, you'll come to the next, join us in the next rum tasting. Anybody that knows anybody about Lands Banana Rum, do get in touch. It would be beneficial to that person who has a bottle of the original Lang's Banana Rum. There is somebody, I'm sure there's at least, hopefully, one or two people in Traquia, um that might have a bottle stuck away in their cupboard somewhere, hopefully. Um, so all I can say is thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I don't think the weather's going to be that great, folks, so... Uh, Plan to do something indoors like um, drink rum, I think. Um, if you want to place your orders online, please do. Or come into the shop. You've got two weeks at these prices. Uh, thank you to all the suppliers for giving up their time on a Friday night to talk about the rums. It's really been uh, entertaining, educational as well. Um, and I don't think you guys would have been thinking you would be doing this on a Friday night as well. It's just the way of the world. Um, so thank you for your time. Thank you and your businesses for the support that you've given TV Watsons. Um, and let's all stick together and stay safe. So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Have a safe weekend. Enjoy yourselves. Thank you very much.